Replacing your trolling motor battery or batteries with lithium can be very confusing. So here are seven factors to consider to help you choose the right size lithium battery and then we'll go through a couple scenarios at the end of the video. The first factor to consider is the max power draw of your trolling motor. Even if you rarely, if ever, use the max speed setting on the motor, you still need a battery that can safely supply enough continuous current for that setting. Otherwise, you'll trip the battery management system into shutting off the battery if full power is ever used. Unfortunately, sometimes the max current rating for a trolling motor is hard to find. If that's the case, find out what size fuse the motor uses and then choose a battery that can continuously supply at least that much current. For example, if you have an 80 pound thrust Minn Kota trolling motor with a 60 amp fuse rating, you would want a lithium battery that can provide at least 60 amps continuous. The second factor is pretty obvious, but you'll be limited on battery dimensions. The easiest route here is to choose lithium batteries that are the same group size as the lead acids that they're replacing. But if you're reconfiguring things, such as replacing three lead acids with a single lithium, the compartment size available to you will limit your choices. The factory battery tray, tie downs, and other hardware may not work either, so make sure you have a plan to secure the battery. The third factor are the conditions that you fish in, such as the weather and the current. As you probably know, batteries don't work very well in very cold weather, and that includes lithium. So if you plan to fish in freezing temperatures, you will need a much bigger battery than normal. Also, if it's often windy or you fish in strong current, then you'll have to use the trolling motor more often and more heavily to keep the battery in position so a larger capacity battery would be necessary. Factor number four is the size and weight of the boat. Generally, if you have a factory installed trolling motor, then it's properly matched to the size and weight of the boat. But if it wasn't factory installed and it's a little bit undersized, or your boat is abnormally loaded down with gear or people, it will cause your trolling motor to work harder and require more battery power. Likewise, if the trolling motor is oversized, then you might be able to use a smaller battery. The fifth factor is how long you're out fishing. A casual fisherman might be on the water for six to eight hours at a time and only use the trolling motor three or four hours, but a serious angler might be on the water a lot longer and use the trolling motor for twice as long. Even if these two people are fishing in the exact same conditions with identical boats, they'll require much different size batteries. The sixth factor is what type of trolling motor you have. Is it a fixed speed motor or a variable speed motor? This isn't a huge deal, but variable speed motors are more efficient and use a little less power than fixed speed motors. That's because they're infinitely variable instead of relying on only a handful of preset speed settings. And finally, factor number seven is depth of discharge. This isn't a major concern with lithium batteries, as they'll last many, many times longer than lead acids. But if you want to increase their lifespan even further, you can design your battery bank to not fully deplete to 0% every time you go out. In other words, if you don't drain lithium batteries all the way on a regular basis, they can last thousands of cycles more than they normally would. So that should mean that your lithium batteries will be the last batteries you ever buy for that boat. As always, I recommend Miller Tech batteries for all of your boat battery needs. Go to store.ldsreliance.com or find the link in the video description for the best prices on the internet for Miller Tech. Now, as promised, let's walk through some scenarios for choosing a battery or battery bank. Let's first look at a more casual fisherman. He has a boat with an 80 pound thrust 24 volt trolling motor that has a 60 amp fuse. He currently has two 12 volt batteries wired in series. He usually fishes a river with a strong current and some wind. The trolling motor is properly sized and is variable speed. He estimates that he's using the motor at about half throttle for two and a half hours per trip. This is because of the higher current and wind that he fishes as opposed to someone who might average a lower speed in calmer conditions. Half throttle on that motor is about 28 amps. Multiply that by two and a half hours and you get 70 amp hours. So this angler could choose between two 12 volt 75 amp hour batteries, which are the same physical dimensions as his lead acids, or he could get two 100 amp hour batteries if he has room to give him extra run time and not be in any danger of fully depleting the batteries. Now let's look at a more serious fisherman that stays out on the water longer. He has the same boat and motor and all of the same conditions. 
but he estimates he's on the trolling motor at half speed for four and a half hours each day. 28 amps times four and a half hours equals 126 amp hours of energy required. So the more serious angler could choose two 12 volt 135 amp hour batteries in series or a single 24 volt 130 amp hour battery if his battery compartment has room. A single battery is always preferable to multiple batteries in series or parallel, but a single battery that large doesn't fit in the same group size as the lead acid batteries they replace. So there you have it. Hopefully that helped you make a decision on a lithium battery for your trolling motor. If you need further help, my phone number is listed on my web store contact page. Thanks for watching.